episode of Comics Gate presents. Uh, today we're going to be talking with Adam Post about his project, College of the Dead. Adam, welcome. Thanks for having me. College of the Dead, it is. Great to be here, John. Yeah, great to have you here, uh, Adam. This is Thanks, your man. first time here, um, I, I do believe. Yeah, uh, it's a privilege. Hey, yeah, introduce yourself. Well, I'm Adam Post. I am publishing College of the Dead. Uh, it's not the first comic book I've published, but it's the first comic book I've published in a good number of years. Um, I published, I was an indie publisher doing um, Chromia Man from the Triumphant Universe. We did the Triumphant Universe of comics, those color comics. Uh, Adam Polina did that, one of the big ones. Did spoof comics in the early 90s and uh, some of the biography comics, uh, personality comics. But uh, it's Comics Gate that drew me back in. Nice. Um, so, our, 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 oh, uh, got a crazy echo going on somewhere. All right. It's probably my fault. Uh, I, I usually am the uh, am the echo guy, but it looks like maybe not in this case. Um, I'll close this. everything. Maybe it stopped. No, I Fantastic. Uh, Let's go. Let's see if we can try that again. So what what is some of your, like, what got you into comics? Well, uh, when I was a kid, I loved the 80s uh, comics and uh, Secret Wars, uh, the Wolverine Limited series, X-Men, all that stuff. And then um, I also was really into G.I. Joe. And it was right around the time that the Ninja Turtles were taking off. And then they were starting to be, well, a couple of years after that, when there was like a black and white boom. And there were animal parodies based on like every cool property, but not G.I. Joe. So I was like, how about G.I. Jackrabbits? So uh, when I was 15, I actually published my first comic distributed through uh, another publisher, another indie publisher. Um, and the G.I. Jackrabbits came out and it was very cool to publish that first book. And uh, it's actually the same publisher that gave Jim Lee his first publishing work, believe it or not, Samurai Santa. Oh, that's uh, crazy. Yeah, yeah, it was, oh, it was yeah, crazy time back then. Yeah, I hear some kind of crazy, crazy feed feedback of of me. It sounds like Darth Vader. Looks a little like Darth Vader based on the logo. I all right, let me. I will unplug yeah, and replug. Yeah, sure. Yeah, because right. I still hear it. Yeah. Do you hear it now? Um, hello, hello, hello. No, that went good. Nice. All right. If it happens again, I will throw my snowball mic and we will All just right. go straight to the notepad. Yeah, it seems to be a little intermittent. So, um, yeah, we'll, we'll keep going. I, yeah, this is going to be hard for me if I keep hearing. Me yeah, no, you can't. You really can't have that go back and forth. I mean, if you want to relaunch, I can reboot it however you want to do it. No, no, no. no. no we'll, we'll, we'll keep trucking. Um, All right. If nothing else, I'll, I'll, I'll have you mute here, and uh, th then we'll be able to keep going. I, I don't know if they're hearing it in the audience, though. Um, let's see. Tell us, audience. Right right now, it sounds okay. So let's keep trucking. All right. Fantastic. Trucking it is. Um, so anyways, yeah. So College of the Dead. So what, what brought this out? What so College of the out? Dead, I came back. All right. So in like um, – I don't know, about uh, 10 years ago, I've been wanting to get back to publishing comics. I freaking love comics. I love comics as a kid. It's the first thing I actually also did professionally, self-publishing uh, G.I. Jackrabbits, and then starting our comic book studio in the uh, early 90s, personality comics, spoof comics. So it's kind of like I always go back to publishing comics. It just, I can't get away from it. So I had this idea to do uh, a zombie apocalypse, and it was the same kind of thing as G.I. Jackrabbits. It's like, well... Yeah, there are a lot of zombie apocalypse projects, but none are based on a college campus. So wouldn't you want to see college students mixed in with their professors kind of dealing with a zombie apocalypse? It's, it's already a dramatic situation, but why not have why not have that set up? Um, so yeah, I have a lot of friends in uh, comics and in publishing, and um, I got a couple of great references of some great talent, and uh, I found... Um, the writer, Stefan Petruka. So I developed it with him and he did a great, great script. Stefan has written for uh, Marvel and IDW and, and other indie companies. And he actually wrote um, X-Files working with Charlie Adlard uh, 
for I don't know, 100 issues or something like that of X-Files, some huge number of issues, just great for Supernatural. So Stefan did an awesome script. And um, then the artist uh, I located, he's in Spain, this guy, Javier Aranda, he's done, the only guy who's done art for College of the Dead has been Javier. And um, his work is fantastic. Um, so he was great to work with. And I made the graphic novel, took a run at Kickstarter a couple of years ago, but it was like, really, I didn't really know how to promote anything. It's so different. It, the mm-hmm. comics game, crowdfunding from offering comics through comic book distributors. It's like so incredible. Comic book distributors, you take one piece of artwork, you send it to them, they give you non-returnable orders, and then you ship the comics and you make money. That's it. And obviously crowdfunding, no man, you're out there, you're telling people one at a time why they wanna buy your book, why they should be interested, why it's so cool, why you're passionate about it. Um, It's like the exact opposite. So, I did Kickstarter first. I had built up a following of like 3,000 people from my College of the Dead Facebook page. And pretty much none of them bought it. None of them were interested. So uh, it don't work. I mean, I, I know you give great advice to uh, publishers on here and um, aspiring publishers. And um, it's absolutely true for me that, you know, no matter how many times people liked and shared cool zombie posts from um, the Facebook College of the Dead page, no, they did not want to buy uh, the book through Kickstarter. And that was like a year and a half ago. And then I had just relaunched. I, I basically found out about Comicsgate through YouTube. I think it was Richard Meyer's video I first saw. And then I saw Ethan doing really entertaining videos. I was like, hey, this is damn interesting. Let me check these guys out. Yeah. So yeah, how are you? Uh, 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 hold on. Uh, can, can you mute yourself real quick, Adam? Yeah. Muted. All right. Yeah, there we go. Oh, sweet, sweet silence. All right. So um, the, the question is, ha- have you begun a YouTube channel? Are, are, are you doing something along the lines like what, what's the big difference that you've done in terms of marketing versus when you do your Kickstarter? I'm going to try to go through the mic on my computer and pray for no echo. So um what i did differently this second time around that got the book um funded and now and in demand is um i followed comicscape and got familiar a little bit with comicscape and it's interesting because from the time when i launched the campaign to now i've learned so much more so when i first launched the campaign i had been following like war campaign guys and some other guys and you know liking people's tweets and sharing people's tweets kind of getting to know some of the people in the, in the comics gate community. And then um, I wanted to do more to promote before I launched, but I kind of knew me, like I didn't want to wait a year till I was like, all right, I'll, I'll just, I'll just get the thing launched already. Got it launched. And then I kind of started to understand, Hey, wait a minute. Um, once like the first show I was on was sweet cast show. Uh, I'm actually on with Clint later after your show. Uh, but so I was on Clint's show and then I, um, Ethan pulled me on to be on uh, Comics Gate Live on his show, mm-hmm. Comic Artist Pro Secrets. And then um, other people started pulling me into Twitter groups. And I didn't even know there was such a thing as Twitter groups. And everybody was just so welcoming and cool and, um, you know, just open to another guy who cares about comics, who wants to do great comics. Um, and that's obviously me. And, uh, you know, people just kept throwing me into other groups. And then, like, you know, you, I was starting to learn, like, okay, yeah, this is the way it works. People get to know you. You retweet their posts. They retweet your posts. And just be really supportive of each other. Mm-hmm. Um, I also, on, uh, on Ethan's advice, did start a YouTube channel. I would gotten kind of a cute nickname because I'm from Long Island, from New York. So I talk fast and talk kind of Long Island, but apparently only about – half as uh, fast as Billy Tucci. So on Ethan's show, the second time I was on, a bunch of people started saying, hey, this guy sounds like um, Billy Tucci, but kind of like half the speed. So Ethan's like, look, I don't want you to be offended, Adam, but they kind of wanted me to call you half speed Tucci. And I was like, that's great. So I got a nickname, half speed Tucci. So my YouTube channel is at halfspeedtucci.com. Nice. And, and also adameveryday.com. 
And I try to force myself to make a great video every day, get inspired to do it. It's a lot of work. It's hard, it's hard yeah. to make good videos. You know that. Adam, do you have yeah. a yeah. Um, I can. I have. Yeah, well, we'll take a minute, but let's give it a shot. All right. Let's, All right. I'll be right back. All right. Hey, I can talk again. Hi, everyone. <laughs> uh, I, I want to be engaged in this conversation, but every sound I make, it it sounds like a firestorm. Um, so we'll give Adam time here to get headphones and get that sorted out. Uh, headphones are usually your 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 go to move. Always have a pair of headphones ready to go, guys. Because if you, if you have echo problems, that usually solves it right away. All right. Sounds like Adam's hooking them up. Adam is plugged in. How does he sound? Uh, you sound fine. Hey, I don't hear myself echoing. So... How do I look? I got headphones. Okay. All right. Pretty yeah. good. All right. Great. Groovy. We can have a conversation now. I'm ready. All right, here we go. Let's talk about uh, College of the Dead. So, College of the Dead, man. Here we go. Let me go full screen with this. All right, so let's hear the pitch on College of the Dead, and uh, I'll, I'll scroll through this and see what kind of art we got here. Absolutely. So one of the things to know about College of the Dead first is it is completely done. I wanted to make sure that the book was completely done uh, before I offered it, and um, it's 140 pages. It's yeah, black and white. Nice. Uh, the cover is colored by the amazing Kyle Ritter. Oh, I excellent. was shocked. That's, that's right here. Yeah, yeah. Nice. And uh, yeah, he did an amazing job. He's uh, every piece he does is like masterpiece. So about he did some work for you too, uh, obviously. But man, he's amazing. Um, so it's 140 pages. It is a zombie apocalypse in a traditional sense of a zombie apocalypse. So it's like walking into the Night of the Living Dead universe. Um, the zombies don't fly. There's no crazy magic. They're zombies. Uh, we don't really deal with how like the zombie apocalypse started. We want to throw you right into the war zone right when you're opening the book and getting into it. That uh, image with the graduates is the cover of College of the Dead book two. And the interior is like 99% done of that as well. Um, and we just, before we start promoting that much, I want to get this book in people's hands. So oh, th uh, this is volume two's cover. Yeah. That's the cover of volume two because and the oh, cover okay. of volume one is um, that football cover that Kyle colored. All right. Now are these interiors from volume one or volume? Two? Yes, sir. Those are interiors from volume one. Okay. And th there's about a dozen sequential pages uh, and the way this book was designed was to be two panels per page. And uh, the, there was a few reasons for that. One of the reasons was the promotion of it on social media. Uh, but a, a driving reason for it was I saw someone else do it. And I like from a storytelling perspective how uh, there was a real suspension of disbelief. And you can kind of just, as you read the panels, uh, you really get a sense that you're like in a zombie apocalypse. and I, I like dynamic layouts. I love dynamic layouts. Uh, but unless it's always done perfectly, when you keep breaking those panels and it gets too dynamic, you do get thrown out of the story sometimes. So I really just it kind of like wonky lettering. Um, so I really just wanted to give it this shot to try. I've never tried this format before. Um, and I like how it came out. It came out very cool. In fact, I actually have. I'll show you um, when we're off this page. Uh, printed prototypes of the... Um, of the 140 page comic. And we also have a sketchbook, which again is a little bit unique. The sketchbook is a hundred page extra book. It's the full script, the full text with photo references that Stefan, our writer gave to Javier for layout purposes. And then we have 50 pages of Javier's layouts. So you get to see all his pencil layouts from how he went from full script to pencil layout. It's it's tremendously educational um, and interesting. So it's like that DVD extra that can help people with some of their storytelling uh, perspectives. Um, and I didn't know if the book would kind of work and be cool. Uh, so we made the prototype um, 
actually months ago. <laughs> and after we put it together, it looked very cool. And then I also kind of couldn't help myself. Uh, I made an art book as well. So there are actually three editions of this, of this book. The art book is 260 pages. It's eight and a half by eight and a half. And it's literally one panel per page where the original art of pencils and inks from Javier is just featured one panel per page with no lettering. So it's one of those situations where because uh, all of the panels were all done equal size, there was an opportunity to create that uh, art book, to create that product, to give kind of, again, people a perspective of what it's like to get the work in when uh, Javier is starting to deliver it. And all, I have another prototype of that, uh, physical prototype of that book with me now too. And um, I really like how that came out. I can't see doing it every time necessarily because we are going to have book two. I'm planning on uh, book three, although I don't have a release date yet for it. Um, but for book one, I really wanted to do it and show people the work. Okay. Uh, and how many volumes are you planning or books? I'm going to do it as an ongoing series. Um, I have to say that, you know, uh, I feel like maybe on the third one where we'll play around a little bit with the layout. I want to see what people think uh, when they get the layout of uh, the, the two panels per page. Do they like the pacing? Do they like how everything was done? Um, I'm, I'm considering changing to um, getting a little more dynamic with, with um, letting Javier make more choices and stuff too. Because uh, he's fantastic. Um, and, and he could be more dynamic than he had the chance with this layout. So in any event, the idea is to just do it as an ongoing series. I mean, that, that's really the opportunity with um, a zombie apocalypse, apocalypse project like this. Okay. All right. Um, wow, but not, I'm sorry, but not more often than quarterly. Oh yeah. And then Stefan's fantastic, man. And this is why I, I love hiring good people because uh, look, I like to write a little bit myself, but I, I wouldn't have me write one of my projects because I like a lot of work there. I like the character descriptors. We have character descriptions of all the main characters. You really get to see, you know, who is who and what the heck they're doing. All right. All right. Let's take a look at uh, your tiers real quick. Uh, 25 bucks, you get the book. And that's uh, 140 pages black and white. Yes, sir. Good deal. Uh, 50, you get a, uh, the book and the ash can. Yep, the 100-page Ashcan with the full 50 pages of script and 50 pages of layouts. Okay. I'm glad to see people have picked that one up. You know, they've picked up on that. Even though I, it's difficult because people don't know what, what, do you, what do you mean an Ashcan? It's like, well, it's whatever you say it is an Ashcan. But some people trust me and some people got to hear me describe it. Well, for those that don't know, an Ashcan is typically a, a smaller black and white version. Uh, the idea is that once upon a time, college kids made their own comics, folded paper, and uh, or, or printed on two sides of the paper, folded it, stapled it. That was an ash can. Mm -hmm. So um, now they get done a little bit more professionally. Uh, Twenty-five bucks for the digital. Um, for people that pay attention, I'm anti-digital, um, but I am glad that you at least priced it at the same price as the book. Yeah, I couldn't. So. I couldn't price it for less. I only mm -hmm. put it up recently because some of my other friends um, have done it, and someone really explained. Honestly, I went and started backing a bunch of uh, other people's campaigns. Some of my other buddies that I ha I've made so many buddies, so it's like, all right, I really do want to back everybody because they all deserve it. You know, everybody who's working so hard and making making their books. Uh, so anyway, just for convenience sake for me. I mean, ideally, I'd like to have the physical book, but I can see someone might just be going to be like, all right, yeah, you back me and just give me the money and, you know, it'll yeah, always be in my it, email, it, you know? Yeah, international people are always saying that they want digital, but uh, right here, it doesn't look like there's many internationals well, coming in. You know, we got um, a couple how, of... How long, ago, how long ago did you put that up? Uh, like a week, a few days ago. Yeah. Okay. So, like, yeah. I, I, yeah, I, yeah. And also you got to be careful about who you listen to too, because in my first campaign for graveyard shift, like it, it seemed like a lot of people were like, Hey John, why don't you make it so we get, I think it was like a, one of the trading cards uh, or a trade or a trading card or an Ashcon Ash can add on something like that. So, yeah. I, uh, you know, I, for the most part, I was like, no, no, no. Cause I want to keep it simple. 
Uh, then eventually I was just like, all right, here you go. And I put a tier up there and then there are like three people that backed it. And right. it's like, well, that didn't, <laughs> yeah. Just doesn't make it, it, it's not moving any needles. Yeah. This supposed demand, uh, wasn't really a demand at all. It wasn't so, a demand. Yeah. Yeah. So I mean, I've put we'll it up and how, taken it down. Yeah. So we'll see how well this, uh, digital does for you at the end of your campaign. How much time you got left on this thing? Well, oh, the you already ran in- the whole thing. Yes, brother. We are funded. Uh, we ran it. We're in demand now. Uh, but I'm going to keep working this campaign until um, at least until uh, the books ship in October. Okay. Yeah. And I, I, I like people being able to find this. You know, I registered collegeofthedead.com as well, which points right now to this. And in all my videos, it's collegeofthedead.com as well as this link. But, you know, God willing, somebody will run into my videos a few months after the in-demand is over, and you want to give them a way to be able to find you. Okay. All right. So uh, complete set, all books. That uh... that includes the art book, that 260-page art book. Okay. And when you're, when you're done on this page, I'll, I'll show you the actual uh, prototypes I have next to me, just so people can kind of see. Um, you know, I'll just put it, I did that on Antonio show and Antonio was like, why haven't you been showing these books before? I was like, I don't know. I didn't think of it. It's kind of funny. Hmm. Uh, but yeah, I do actually have like the books exist, <laughs> but the final finals, uh, we're still working out some details on the files or whatnot and everything's got to be perfectly perfect. But yeah, we, yeah, I'm just so th- I'm excited to have printed prototypes and there's a printed prototype that I just got today that where the cover is in color. Uh, which I didn't have before, so yeah. it's pretty uh, pretty exciting. You know how it is when you get that st- the production stuff in, man, and it's mm-hmm. like, oh my god, this is so cool! It really exists. Yeah, and uh, the last year is, uh, I-, I guess, simply five of everything. Yeah, uh, another friend of mine threw- told me, like, listen, throw that on because if your campaign gets anywhere close to not funded, I'm like, forget it, man. I'm not. I mean, he's like, listen, just put it there. Okay. So be- because like Indiegogo, I don't think they will let you like if you if somebody wants to fund something beyond a goal, I don't think they allow that, do they? What do you mean? Not, not a goal. I'm that. sorry. Beyond a tier. So if you want to back the comic book in the ash can, if it was on Kickstarter, the Kickstarter model allows you to give pay as much money as you want. Um, but the Indiegogo model seems to be like. It's not a suggested donation per se. Oh, like a don't. Oh, okay. Yeah, I think there is like a donation thing that you. Can oh, okay. Do. Ah, well, let, um, let them buy this stuff. No out. one does it because you know. I mean, I don't know. Maybe someone does it once in a while for like a buck or something. But yeah, it just seems odd that you would donate any amount of money um, beyond product that you can buy. Yeah, um, but maybe there's someone out there that really wants to uh, launder some money or something. <laughs> I don't know. So, well, I mean, if somebody just um, sees like, I want to see this guy get funded or something like mm-hmm. that, you know, then, yeah. you know, just like, look, 50 bucks, the guy's funded and you get to say that you, you help the guy out. Sometimes you want to, you know, well, you help, you're generous, you know, we're all generous in different ways. Mm. Uh, yeah. All right. So let's see. You, you've uh, raised five thousand seven hundred thirty five. Um, what was your original goal on here? The original goal was really too high. It was fixed. It wasn't fixed. It was flexible at five thousand dollars. Okay. What a mistake! Because, oh, why? Why? Why do you feel that was a mistake? Uh, happy to say, and and, and um, you know, the problem is, even though the flexible goals are very convenient for us as creators, um, you find yourself in a situation where you're not thinking about the customer. To me, it's not, it's a very not comic skate kind of thing to do. And what I mean by that is the customer needs to know if you're 20% funded and they kick in money towards your project, are they going to get their product? And, and I found like initially, because I didn't do a big, I didn't have a good promotional push in the beginning. I didn't even know what a Twitter group was. So you know, I barely got any retweets. I was on a couple of shows. A couple guys great were, were great. Ethan was so generous with his show. I was on a show three or four times. Uh, but just the same, you know, I was I'd be on a show and I'd be like, well, I've only done two thousand so far, and that was like forty percent of goal. And I was like, but you know what? I have to tell you, the books are all done. Don't worry. I was basically funded when I had a thousand bucks. I was ready to ship these anyway. And I, you know, you have to make up excuses. 
But the truth of it is, we're all, all of us who've been backing crowdfunding, and I've been backing crowdfunding projects myself, uh, seven, eight years or whatever, going back to Kickstarter and, and a little bit of Indiegogo and now more and more of Indiegogo. If you can tell if it looks like something's not going to fund, and it's a major turnoff. So if you're on day one and you're at like 20% or 30% of your goal, okay, but you, you, you shouldn't be there like very long. As soon as it's like so people are seeing where you're at, you're not funded, and they have to start measuring your momentum and questioning, is this thing going to get funded? They're, they're thinking about not – they think they should be just backing you, not thinking about whether or not you're going to make your goal and they're going to get their stuff. That I don't know yeah, how you feel and, about that. And, and – well, I think you need to set goals at actual amounts to get funded. I mean, if if all you needed was a thousand, then yeah, put it at a thousand. Um, five thousand, you know. I mean, I, I, I mean, think I, five thousand. Yeah. I think five thousand is highly doable. But I think what you lacked um, was a promotion engine, so you didn't have your YouTube fully going. So everyone should be promoting and building their YouTube. You know, Definitely. for however long it takes, get you know, get a thousand, get two thousand followers uh, or subscribers. Um, and then you keep ringing your project in their ear for, you know, six months. And uh, after people are, are aware of it and you've built up that hype, then I think you can actually hit that 5,000 pretty quickly. I think uh, Sweetcast. Um, yeah, perfect example. That. So, um, In fact, um, he and I are going to be talking about that um, later, like what he and I learned, um, mm -hmm. you know, from we. what I try to do with my YouTube channel and um, – Clint does similar stuff sometimes, but I'm really focused. Like I had Mike Manley on, you had him on, I think just the other night, um, not Mike Murphy. I'm sorry. Um, who okay. did samurai and dinosaurs mm -hmm. and he, and he failed the first time mm -hmm. and then he relaunched and he was successful when he relaunched. Yeah. I think, I think people tend to be successful when they relaunch because what they did was the, when they launched the first time they didn't promote. Uh, they, they started promoting on the day that they launched their project. And then what they yep. did was they found out that they failed over the course of 30 or 60 days. But what they managed to do correctly was now they ma managed to lay down the groundwork for this project, who they are, what they're about, all the stuff they should have done before they launched the first time. So now when they go back and launch a second time, that initial groundwork of building up an audience has been done. Hey. But that, that's why it's important, and I and I stress to everybody: get your YouTube's going, start building out your networks before you launch your campaigns, and you'll find it a lot less painful. Yeah, it's this is a sweat equity business. You know, you you mm -hmm. put the work in up front, up front, and you know, Mike and I were talking, and um, we spent two hours talking about what he learned, and I learned a lot from even just asking him about what he learned. And um, one of the things was like, I didn't know Twitter groups existed. And if you're not popular enough on Twitter that like me, you don't know what a Twitter group is. You need to spend more time following people on Twitter, retweeting them, showing them love. You know, you don't have to be phony. Just be supportive of them, even if you only have 10 followers. And and then you start getting people like you. It's sort of like, all right, well, let's put you in this little private group. They don't even ask you. They just throw you in a group. Yeah. So it's like, wow, that's great. Someone just like pulled me into a party. And uh, Mike and I came up with a number of five, like at least make sure you're in five groups and you don't ask to be in these groups. You get invited in. You don't have to create them yourself either. You yeah. should be popular enough to do that. Do you, you agree, John? Like you got it. Like, um, I, I, I guess um, I, I, I mean, all I'm, I don't know about how well Twitter groups and I, I mean, yeah, you, you are building a network, so there's nothing wrong with that. Mm. Um, but for me, it's all about YouTube channel because through YouTube, one, you're, you're able to reach directly out to people to get it, the feel for who you are. Um, otherwise, you're just text on a screen. You know, one, once I get an idea for who you are, your personality type of person you are, uh, that text takes on a little bit more of a flavor. So, I, I you know, I, I like to think that when people read something on my Twitter, like they get my sarcasm now. <laughs> oh, yeah, we do. Yeah. And uh yeah, but it, but if I wasn't talking on, you know, you know, and, and getting out there, people would have no clue. And YouTube is the, the other main point of YouTube is, you know, people being able to reach out beyond the comic skate audience and, and do what you can to bring more people in. Um, otherwise, all we do is we just keep keep stirring around a small little pot and we, we want to grow as much as we can. So 
um you know we we do you know like ethan reaches out to star wars community um you know I, somewhere out there you know i told mark Poulton, you know going to wrestling I, I i think uh oh yeah um edwin the ace like he does a wrestling wrestling thing that's good because you're you're, you're going to cross pollinate wrestling with comic books and that's like an easy crossover because i mean you're already watching people in spandex fight each other so it's and a lot of those guys have bought comics before they mm -hmm. just weren't buying them recently so john it's a really good point that you just made and it's something that i want i'll talk to um clint about it later too is uh when we're in comic skate it's a it's a tremendous advantage to everybody else in comic skate to try to bring in new customers it's not even so much like we're trying to bring in artists or or writers or what if it happens it happens but we want comic skate to grow and look it, it benefits everyone else in comic skate when comic skate grows so if you're someone who's into wrestling if you're someone who's into horseback riding whatever the heck it is mm -hmm. you, you whatever you can do a good passionate youtube channel about um that helps all of us and it, yeah look, look at like someone that's like uh even nick ricada who's not comic skate like he's not like really you know cruising around with the comic skate guys you know what i mean yeah but yeah if, if there was a lawyer that had that same personality if nick ricada was like a big comic book fanatic you know then boom i mean he would be a huge asset someone like that but and who would think that a lawyer channel yeah would, would have anything to do with comics so yeah, I mean, you, you can go, you can go wide and far, you know, it, regardless of whatever you're doing, be it, you know, even if it's just like comics and reviews, you know, you can look what R Richard did, Richard C. Meyer, uh, you know, he, he did spicy comic book reviews and, uh, you know, that blew his whole channel up. So, I mean, you know, if you have a good point of view on things, you know, people want to tune and listen, just like any radio program. So, but that that is the main thing that that I, I think is and that's why I think YouTube is so important because YouTube is where we're going to grow. Otherwise, we're just going to all be, you know, just yeah. Twitter is going to always be yeah. small. Twitter yeah. is very small. It, it, there's people on Twitter and it'll get you the five thousand dollar goal like I did a five thousand dollar goal. But it's not going to get you into the next level of, you know, Monster MD where he's doing 60,000 and numbers like that. Now, uh, I don't think that uh, Von Klaus has a big YouTube channel necessarily, but he was out promoting all over the planet. Mm -hmm. uh, and he's great with retweeting other people's projects that he thinks are appropriate. Um, and I'm sure some Monster MD guys, because that, that Klaus brought in, wanted to uh, back in College of the Dead and vice versa. And I've helped him. And um, Vinny Tartamello is another great guy. There's just so many great guys. Um, but yeah, we, we all build it, we all keep it successful, and we all kind of keep to the core of what Comics Gate is about um, and helps everybody. Yeah. All right. Um, so guys, if you have any questions, be sure to at me. I'll be coming back to the chat here in a little bit. I want to bring in our next guest, which is uh, Render Contender. Ah. Uh, welcome, Render. Uh, hopefully, Render has... Audio? A, yeah, a microphone hooked up. Hey, can you hear me? Hello. Hello. More render. How you doing, render? We heard him and he was gone. He's coming. Uh, which brings me to my next point, guys. When you come on shows, be sure you know how to uh, work everything. Get your, keep your mics in order. Run, run everything like a professional. Know, know your stuff. This is your business. So uh, render, I'll, I'll fill in some of the gaps while he's sorting out whatever he's sorting out. I, I got uh, it. I couldn't hear you guys. Oh, okay. Volume oh, is down down on my ear, earphones. Oh, there you go. Can you guys I'll hear work. me okay? Yes, we can. Nice. Mm -hmm. All right. So uh, render is uh, one of the winners of the Graveyard Shift talent search. Uh, he ended up drawing 20 pages of the uh, it's Mick Mayhew and Sea Urchin uh what is it the epilogue for volume two so when, when you guys finish reading volume two you pick up the supplemental and then render will have his 20 page story i think his will be the first story in there of uh the 60 page supplemental so uh with that render welcome thanks thanks for having me hi adam how are you great how you doing i'm doing pretty good so uh yeah i i just uh wanted to take this time john was just mentioning you know uh, i am one of those guys that's only on twitter and <laughs> don't really have much of a voice out there so people don't really know my personality 
but uh, yeah, speaking of uh, Twitter groups, those can get you in trouble as much as they they help too. <laughs> so, well, so, life life will get you in trouble. That's true. So yeah, you, you can't. will never you will never escape trouble and pain. Yeah. Um, so embrace it. Everyone, get on YouTube. Start building your channels. We we all have to uh, do our part to uh, help grow uh, Comicscape. And uh, that means we have to draw, we have to write, and we also have to get online and talk about fart jokes. Yeah, this is true. Mm -hmm. All right, Render. So you got a project coming out called Outlaw Nights. When is it? Oh, September 24th it launches? Uh, yeah, let me go back down on that. Uh, there we go. Let me yeah. get you on full screen. There's no nudity on here, right? Nope, we're good. All right, guy got me last week. Hmm. So there we go. All right. So I'll put it here now. Now I'm the artist on this book, and I'll start off by introducing the the uh, the writer is uh, uh, Ben uh, Fusile, um or Fusebox, and he actually reached out to me about the time I was doing the um, the pages for Graveyard Shift Two, uh, the epilogue, and um, he was one of the only people that reached out to me for you know looking for an artist that had a complete script. I mean, it was very professional. It was done down to the character designs. And uh, I just love the story. It's one of those things, I don't know, John, if you've ever gotten one of these where, you know, Graveyard Shift might've been this for you, where you just want to draw it. Just, you're just reading like two pages in and you're imagining yourself drawing these pages. And at the time he wasn't ready to, to, to pull the trigger. And, and I was obviously very busy. But um, as soon as I uh, time opened up and I opened up my commissions, uh, he, he was pretty smart. He pretty much just uh, booked up my commission time with with page requests from the script he had already drawn. Uh, so he would just say, you know, draw this page, draw this page. And uh, it's you know, I was really happy to be busy and be working as an artist. Uh, but also it's just you could see some of the samples of the pages here. Um, it's just a, uh, a, it was a cool story that I wanted to sink my teeth into. So uh, I'll go over the, um, uh, his writing again is, is really good. You can kind of see a summary here. Uh, action, suspense, filled drama, taking to the future of the underworld in the most vast ocean space itself. Uh, sign up for updates on the launch. So yeah, if you guys were doing the pre-launch and uh, we have quite a mailing list going already. And a lot of those people got to see uh, some of the, the cover a little bit earlier. And uh, he's letting me share this here on uh, on John's channel as well. So, John, if it's OK with you, I'll jump to those a little later. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. So, yeah, what we're trying to do is make some of that mailing list some exclusive content to, to really drive that forward. And I've talked to other people and uh, that really does help. And now that you can link that into the campaign itself with perks, uh, I think that's really good. It, it just makes it less stressful when you're ready to launch, when you have that mailing list. So uh, yeah, been, it's been pretty good to us so far. And uh, we still got uh, two or three weeks to go uh, to be ready. And uh, yeah, I mean, he's, he's gonna be so much better at, his writing is so much better than I can explain these things. But uh, pirates, soldiers, and guns, uh, lots of guns. I posted oh. a couple of those uh, today. And uh, uh, Cyrus Lawson, he's the main character and he's the probably the most uh, starts out as the most normal kind of wants to be left alone guy and gets thrown into uh, by literally by page two. He's thrown into um, uh, these mix of pirates and adventure. Uh, and uh, the, that's really again, what drew me in was uh, I wanted to draw uh sci-fi i wanted it to to kind of you know uh, i guess i don't want to say practice at that but you know the more you do with something the better and uh it's actually a funny story because it, it does link to graveyard shift uh mm -hmm. but when i when i first found out about that i that i'd be working with um uh, cal jameson on the project mm -hmm. you know we were like you know high school kids like little girls we were you know chatting Whoa. each other like you know just giggling you know i call it scuttlebutt you know we were yeah. we, we were like the bathroom, sharing the bathroom together it, yeah pretty much mm -hmm. it was like yeah. hey cow 
do you know who's drawing for this? Do you know, do you have any idea about this story? Come on, fill me in. Did they tell you you could do this? And so <laughs> he was going, I, I don't know. But so he's joking. But again, because it's on Twitter, I didn't understand that he was joking to your point. <laughs> and he says, he says, I don't know a lot about the story, but there's a lot of really technical sci-fi buildings and cities and backgrounds. And I didn't realize that he was just kind of pulling my leg as an artist. So I'm mm. thinking, oh shit, okay, mm -hmm. I, I'm gonna, I'm starting to pull up reference, and I go to town like right away. I don't even think, I don't, I don't get the joke at all, and I spend a couple of days before I even realize that he's <laughs> joking. I, I'm pulling up th the coolest sci-fi reference I can find. It, it, I got a catalog on it. I'm drawing. I'm practicing my backgrounds. I'm getting every, every perspective book pulling off my shelf, and and then you know it, it turns out that's not what it was. So. Yeah, it was a lot of like woods and water. Yeah, it was almost <laughs> exactly opposite. Yeah, and I remember, you know, I'm I'm uh, here. I am a, a navy guy and and a swimmer. I love water, and then I start drawing these th this water in the background. And John John's first comment to my 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 uh, batch of uh, art that I turned in for edits was, "You got to really draw the water." And I'm going, oh, yeah, yeah, draw, I, dr yeah, draw it like you love it, draw it like you love it. And I'm going, yeah. I, I do love water. I mean, literally, <laughs> I, I did draw it like I love it. So, I mean, mm -hmm. I, I went back to it and I was <laughs> pulling up every artist I can find on how do they draw water. And uh, I, hopefully, I got closer. Yeah, no, um, yeah. It, like, I'm, I've been looking at the pages a lot in the last few days because yours is actually in the process of being colored right now. And, uh, yeah, yeah, your water looks fine. But uh, the original, if I recall, what what he, what render had done was just kind of like these little squiggly lines that didn't they didn't really denote anything. And uh, then he went back and, and did a lot more what are spot blacks, I, I guess. And uh, yeah. yeah, and it's like if you're gonna do anything, like you could just draw like a horizon line, and then like a really good colorist can go in there and just kind of texture it up and. But you don't have any really control over like the waves or anything like that. Um, but if you're but if you're gonna draw like the water, then you know really dig into it and really, really you know every little wave and make sure the water has a flow to it and whatnot. And yeah, it, it's hard to describe. But yeah, originally, if I recall, it was just some squiggly lines. So. Yeah, yeah, it it, it was. It, mm -hmm. And you know, you always go back and and cringe at some of the things your choice, your artistic choices, but. Uh, I got to say it was it was so much uh, more of a relief to know just the first comments I got back from you that you were going to be straight with me because I didn't have to stress out uh, and as much I still did. But, mm -hmm. you know, I, I, knowing that somebody's got your back was, you know, they're going to notice every little detail that you missed or the flow of the page. And uh, it, it really let me take more chances. And then uh, the the next kind of thing I had to overcome was when I wanted to ask you to do that double page spread, which I think you have on the, um, the campaign, uh, updates. And, uh, that was just something I kind of a vision I saw in my head and I thought, you know what, it, it that's the kind of thing I have fun drawing and the stress was getting to me and I wasn't having as much fun. So I just decided, you know, I need to draw things draw the way I have fun, like I did with the um, Comic Skate Cafe. You know, if I'm either having fun or laughing at the page, I, I think it shows. And uh, when I had asked you about that and you worked with me on the layout a lot, uh, it was like from then on out, I was, I was, uh, you know, much more comfortable with everything. Yeah. And I, I might have had the conversation with you, but it, it was basically along the lines of like, I want you guys to look as good as possible and you know that and that just isn't the art it also goes into the coloring like i'm very involved with the coloring and uh i want the colors when they go on you to be just as great and and lift the art as much as they they possibly can so yeah i am pretty involved with people when it comes to uh you know making sure we're all squared away so um let me see if i can pull this up real quick I'll show the uh, double page spread. This is a smaller one from the campaign, sadly. Um, but yeah, mm. I think that turned out pretty cool. That's cool. Yeah, double page spread. And I, it's, what are, I think some of the notes were just kind of like in some of the panel shapes, uh, 
that Render had going on and um, trying to keep things a little bit more like width-wise, I think we're kind of the same. And I think that middle panel kind of split or it, it awkwardly split where the gutter would be at. And uh, I, I think uh, Render extended the panel. And uh, yeah, but just minor stuff, just minor things. And, yeah, uh, mm -hmm. it, that brings up a good point too, uh, especially about the with the Outlaw Knights uh, campaign, we're planning on doing, um, I think it's going to be, it's either going to be 10 or 11 of the pages of it's going to be it's right now it's set at 48 pages um i'm reviewing the layouts uh like i said it's a fully scripted he's very detailed but i think i want to add a couple of splash pages in there um to just to pace the story better and that might extend it up um i think i'm at 50 right now um and then we might wow 50 pages that. done no 50 pages will be the final count uh, on the the story because i'm i'm laying out pages right now um i have i think we have about eight or nine pages done though in the bag right now uh and that's uh fully colored and the the cover is out to be colored right now as well okay um and did you have other pages that you wanted to share render yeah i'm gonna change over um i gotta share my uh let's see I'm going to stop that one and um, yeah, render actually used to be a, what was it? An assistant or something like that for art T bear. And uh, ah. yeah. And art didn't know it or something, but now you guys are hanging back out. <laughs> oh, that's very cool. Yeah. yeah. That's yeah. Uh, I do. I'm catching on to all these things, John, you know, trying to, trying to practice what you're preaching and getting mm -hmm. out there more but it was more comfortable for me to go analog so if i can i've i've gotten in my car and i'm driving to 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 hook up with with uh you know guys that i know from from you know comics gate from online and uh it's been a lot of fun so I, I literally just drove to go see him uh in um in a show that was somewhat local and then um, a lot of us guys got together in san diego at, during the comic con so uh, I, it's not super close for me, but close enough. Mm -hmm. And that's helped me get more comfortable with everybody so that I can be on these streams. I was on Arch Channel a few days ago, too, and uh, kind of rehashing those those old memories because it, it has we figured out it's been over 20 years. Wow. Uh, so. So, yeah, I was it, and he, he kind of outs me on the thing. But I was I was just mm -hmm. a punk, punk kid, uh, quite literally. Uh, <laughs> I was v very into the punk scene and and. Uh, <laughs> So he remembered me that way, and I was really hesitant at first, even when I when I sh shared my background with you, uh, of of admitting that because because I was thinking I don't know if Art remembers me well, I don't know if <laughs> he's going to be you know oh that that punk ass you know <laughs> I, I didn't think it would help me sell myself, <laughs> mm -hmm. uh, but then uh, when I when I saw him at the show and he was like oh I said hey I'm Render Contender and he goes oh. Render Contender, that's awesome. You know, we got to get together. And I, it felt creepy to not tell him who I was yeah, <laughs> after that point. So I walked back and I said, hey, I used to work for you. And then, you know, the rest is, is uh, you know, Art history. must be a high on. I don't know what his deal is. Yeah. Well, uh, you know, after 20 years and without a mohawk, it's, you know, I do look, oh, I do yeah, look he, quite a bit different. <laughs> yeah. He might have only noticed the mohawk, right? Yeah. Yeah. I, I went... I went super professional, uh, military and all that stuff. So it, I, I'm a different person. Nice. nice. Still punk deep down in my soul, but you know. Yeah. Uh, military, did you actually go military or are you just, what are, uh, you just cleaned up now? No, no. I literally went to the military to try to try to clean up. Nice. <laughs> what did yeah. you do? Army? Uh, no, I did Navy, the Seabees. Um, uh, it's their construction battalion. Oh, cool. So, yeah, it was really cool. I actually spent more time with Army and um, uh, Air Force, actually, because they, they have their own um, engineering and construction battalions as well, and you train together. So I never never went on a boat, never had to do any of that stuff. So Excellent. Did, I, did you ever go overseas anywhere interesting? No, I never got a chance to because of the timing. The The time that I was in was during the, the downsizing and the, you know, bringing everybody back. I was slated to go to a couple different places, uh, Spain. Um, and every, every time our battalion would get, uh, you know, 
canceled or pulled back. And there was a lot of, uh, you know, you'd call them layoffs, I guess. But uh, everybody got quickly transitioned into the reserves. So that's where I spent the rest of my time after that. So uh, any any work I did was in, in state, in the nice. States. Yeah, lucky. Very yeah, cool. but yeah, it was it was a lot of fun. We got to do a lot of uh, charity stuff uh, during, you know, the Hurricane Katrina. Got to rebuild a lot of uh, hospitals, schools, uh, stuff like that. There you go. See, we should have had you guys building that wall uh, or, or digging that trench. That's what I want done is a trench. Yeah, no, uh, I'm, six, I'm more pro, feet, I'm pro trench. Wide. Yeah, 60 feet wide, 60 feet deep. And then with bamboo shoots sticking up. Oh, that's the end of it. You can't yeah. get across that. If you can get across that, you're welcome. <laughs> I mean, why yeah, not? If you, you can make get that kind of that, you deserve to be here. Yeah, you deserve to be here. Yeah, yeah. It's going to be the minority <laughs> of people, probably. But. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, but yeah. Oh, yeah. And then you dig all. You take all the dirt that you dug up, and then you put all that. You pile that on the American side. So then you know you got a sixty foot drop, and then you get like I don't know, probably you know hundred foot, hundred foot up the other side. Then maybe you put some machine gun turrets up on top. Now we're talking. Um, <laughs> but uh, fill the rest with Captain Marvel back issues. There we go. No, 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 we, don't, we don't want it. We want. We don't want to give them anything to hold on to or take shelter under. Yeah. Um, but uh, I want to thank early arrivals in the chat: uh, Peter Sharon, James Hayes, Matthew Fowler, Matt Wenger, Eric Charles Ash, El Gargoyle, Ghostly Israel Garcia. And Red Gaze, oh, here we go, Fox B5, and Moderator Supremes, It's McGee, Slick Rick, and uh, Matt Fowler. Thank you guys for being early arrivals. Appreciate you. Um, let's see. I'm going to scroll through here real, real quick while Render is looking for that stuff. Uh, it's McGee. I think he needs to plug in his headphones. So, uh, okay. Yeah, we took care of that. Um, -do -do -do. Look at it. It's McGee with the good advice. That's Crystal McGee mm -hmm. um, with that great book. Mm-hmm. Yeah, Kevin. good night. Good night. Yep, I backed it. I don't remember the title, but yeah. Yep. Uh, L Gargoyle says hashtag believe Malin. I don't know why he does that, <laughs> um, but uh, yeah. Why, why not? It's a good idea. Believe you can believe John Malin. Yeah. Um, let's see. I think I saw Ben in the chat too. Ben, what? He's ben? the the writer on the writer. on Outlaw Nights. Okay. Um, and I'm ready. I'm ready with that art whenever you are. Okay, let's bring up the art. Let me know if, you're, if I'm sharing it properly. Oh, no, I, I don't see it in the uh, room. You're going to have to do something. Okay, it should. Something clicky. Yeah. Make a couple more sounds. Render, the more shows you're on, you'll be surprised. You know, maybe another four or five shows. You'll just start being yourself. Um, you know, for me, when I was on my first show, I was really, like, quiet, nervous, whatever. And then after being on a couple of shows, just like, you know what? All right. I kind of get the vibe here and you just do your own thing. You yeah. learn it. You'll be real comfortable quick. Just need to do a couple of them. Yeah. This is only my second show. So we'll see. I was a little too much myself in my, the first show with, <laughs> with art. So you got to balance it out a little bit. Yeah. You know, Jason from star caps network, he has a small, but a great show. That was the first show I got to do like a one-on-one -on -one for, about a 45 minutes or something. And I could really kind of understand like, Hey, I've got interesting stuff to say for 45 minutes straight. Um, and he's just like a, a very easy uh, interview. Let's put it that way. Uh, but there's a bunch of other guys too. I think we're friends in some groups, aren't we? Or am I in with Ben, your writer friend? Um, I, I think so. Um, okay. I'm usually quieter in the, in the groups. Mm -hmm. um, but uh, there, yeah, I've seen you around. There's been, there's a couple of groups that I was, um, I don't want to get into the drama, but there was yeah, a, the drama aside. There's, there's a guy making videos that were that were kind of uh, I'll be myself. They were pissing on uh, my current campaign, and I wasn't happy uh, about it. So not, I took I took it personal. Cool. So yeah, I would too. That's not cool. So I, I kind of noped out of that group. But um, yeah, 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 yeah. There's good people. There's a lot of good people out there. People that you don't click with or don't respect you or your work or other people's work. You know, if they don't respect other people, they're not going to respect you. Stay away from the troublemakers, you know, just like anything else. All right. John, how am I doing now? You should have I, – I clicked share on the application. All right. We got it For, for we photos. Go. And Boom. I'm going to go I'm go full screen on that because I can click through these. All right. So yeah, that looks cool. this is our title that I designed. Um, 
uh, following that that warm and cool tone colors. Yeah, I love uh, it. I was really happy with how that turned out. And then I'll just click through. I'm showing a lot of my inks and then the colors afterward, I think. Uh, oh, this is the, uh, this actually the cover. Um, it's not colored yet. So uh, that logo will be um, our colorist, uh, Pressy, uh, has this in his hands right now. So we should be getting it back soon and, and sending it out of the mailing list. Yeah, that looks great. Looks like you're uh, leveling up. Either that, or we didn't challenge you enough. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, I was telling I was telling Art this in a chat that I that as weird as it sounds, I feel like I'm going through like artistic puberty, mm. and it's like it, it is. I'm just hungry for for the work, and I don't anticipate it lasting long. So I'm just trying <laughs> to 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 feed it as much as I can before it settles down. But but yeah, you know, I'm just I'm grabbing every influence I can find, uh, you know, uh, you know, a lot of the a lot of the comic skate guys um, with the work they're putting out, you know, it's just fun to be in a group again. You know, when I was I was only 16 in that that Hack Shack Studios and it was intimidating, but everybody uh, it was like it was like rap battle. If you <laughs> if you could do something good, everybody, you know it's kind of celebrated it while they're also busting your chops at the same mm -hmm. time, if that makes sense. But you just hope that, you know, all these guys, when they, when they see what I'm doing, I'm going to slap this down and, you know, they're going to, you know, I'll be the King for like two days until somebody else <laughs> figures out how to do it. But I think it stirs up. It's like the, the, um, I was post the, that kind of image boom. I was after that, but it's kind of what I saw happening is everybody kept wanting to one up each other, but in a, a really kind of friendly competitive way. Mm -hmm. And yeah. um, I, I, I don't see that happening again until now with, with this group, you know? Yeah. Yeah. No one, no one wants to publicly bust anybody's chops anymore uh, except comic skate. <laughs> so, yeah. Yeah. Um, I, mean, I mean, we used to be brutal. We'd get pages mm -hmm. in that were gorgeous and, you know, I remember one where a guy drew a thumb on the wrong side and art was ruthless. I mean, everybody was ruthless about it. And we had to do an overlay correction on it, um, overlay pencils and then inks. Mm -hmm. uh, but yeah, it was like, there's no, you get no quarter. Yeah. <laughs> so. Yeah, um, no, this, this is great stuff here. And yeah, it does seem like you're leveling up and you're processing all the stuff very well. And uh yeah, man. And I, I'll say from my own experience working with Render, you know, Render was always delivering. Like, I mean, he was always checking in. Here's another page. Here's another page. Um, I, I had no stress with Render. Like I knew like he was going to be the guy that was just going to keep turning it in, like the work in like perfectly. And he did. Made it and, easier uh, for you. Yeah. So uh, I would highly recommend people if you get a chance to work with uh, Render. So. Fantastic. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Oh, Especially with these improvements, man. You're, yeah, you're catching fire right now. This is really good stuff. Really detailed. Love all the panels, the liquor labels, and uh, yeah, everything on here. All right. What else you got here? All right. And we get into um, this is actually the first page of the story. So uh, hopefully it sets it up pretty well. Um, uh, this. This doesn't give away a lot, but it really sets up the um, the drama right off the bat. Uh, these are, um, you know, uh, this is the the crew of the um, uh, the uh, of, of the ship. Yeah, the crew of the ship. I'm trying to think of the. I'm drawing a blank on the name of the ship. Uh, the hazard. I'm sorry. Mm. Uh, I actually, you can't see from this angle, but when I did a ship design for Ben, and I I copied the look of an elephant for the ship uh from the side wow. you can't tell but um yeah if you're looking at it from the top down it, it looks like a elephant uh or elephant skull uh the um uh, the guys the the captain of that ship uh his name is ivory so there's a lot of elephant you know tusk ah. type of tattoos and themes that you'll see running through here uh so they're going through a security checkpoint and obviously um you know, they're, they're jacking with the systems here and uh, this this was my little shout out to Star Trek, which uh, yeah, uh -huh. it was it was even it was even uh, a little more derivative at first. <laughs> but uh, uh, Ben asked me to change it. He wanted the, it, it to fit more of the genre of what he was going for. So uh -huh. uh, I agreed. But I tried. 
I, I tried to put her in. She looked a little too damsel in distress, I think is what he said. Mm. So I had to look her, make her look a little more badass. Um, yeah. But uh, uh, real quick, let me uh, address. We've got a super chat. Alex 303 for two bucks said just back College of the Dead. All right. Oh, thanks, Alex. That's fantastic. Mm -hmm. All right. Um, all right. What else you got there? Right all right. This is the colors. Um, and I, I really loved what, what Pressy was doing here with the reds uh, for the Wait, alert. Who, who's the colorist? Um, he goes by Pressy. I'm not even going to do him the disservice of trying to pronounce his name. Uh, but he's known kind of in the in the, the group uh, as Pressy. So, okay. uh, yeah, some guys nice work. Uh, introduced me to him when I was uh, 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 some of the guys I met up with in San Diego. So that are that might be in the chat. I don't know. Uh, but yeah, I saw some of his colors and, and I think this was the first page he tried out for us. And so I was I was very happy when I saw this. Yeah, very cool. So um, and then a lot of these other pages, uh, they jump around more because of the I really wanted to nail the character designs. And uh, Ben, like I said, is very specific about these characters and how they look, which I love, makes it easier to do my job. Um, but gives me enough freedom to, to kind of go crazy with the art. But he, you know, he, he tones me down when I, when I need to actually, usually he's telling me more tattoos, more piercings is, is usually my instruction. <laughs> cool. <laughs> so, uh, those are much easier edits than, than draw it like you love it. So <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> a lot, yeah. lot less, less stress, but, but that still rings in my ear, John. So I, yeah. I try to draw everything that way now. Yeah, no, that, this all looks great, man. Great stuff. Uh, your detail. How long are you spending on, on a page, roughly? Um, these, so this page is probably about uh, eight, nine hours uh, to finish. And, and um, when I'm going into this, I, I almost, I, I work digital on these. Mm -hmm. So I, I go str almost straight into the inks. And um, I've learned a lot more from, um, you know, copying a lot of the, the, the pros to, get i need to have my i'm not like ethan you know who's like i don't know how he does that just draws yeah, where, from his head yeah basically a jet like the loosest of gestures and then he puts yeah. the whole body that, yeah my layouts are pretty much uh every single structure and perspective is down but then it lets me go straight into the ink so i don't bother bother with the middle stage from there hmm. Uh, which helps uh, speed me up. Now that cover that you saw, that's closer to like, you know, 14 hours worth of work because that's that was a, a stretch for me. Oh, OK. Yeah. No, I'd be interested to see what your uh, what your what our pencil layer looks like. Yeah. Yeah. Well, and that's the thing I, I got off topic, but I was going to say in the campaign, we are going to be offering up um, uh, original pages. So my plan is to uh, dust off the. Um, the inking pens, some of the old uh, rapidio graphs and, and the brushes and um, and uh, do some of the splash pages that would be more like this one and mm -hmm. and offer them up as original art. So oh. I only set myself to do 10 because there's no way I'll be able to stay on on um, any kind of schedule uh, unless I just kind of pick and choose the, the coolest pages to um, to do that. So I'll probably be, you know, laying them out still. Uh, to get the perspective right, and then I'll just light box it to do the pencils, uh, and then ink over that. That's great. Yeah, I'm, I'm sure that's going to look cool. Yeah, and you know what? The one of the hardest things for me is that when I I don't know if you uh, have this challenge, but when I tried my hand at inking again when I was 16, uh, you always pull out uh, your lines. Or at least that's the way people were doing it. But when I work digital, I go out from from out to in or I go towards my wrist. Do you mean when you're doing pull outs like the little right? I do. Okay. I do drag ins, I guess, is the uh, name for it. And I uh, and I go very fast that way. You know, I don't know if it's because of being left handed or not, but it's just very backwards. But if I cannot repeat that and I've tried uh, with a brush. Mm -hmm. it, it would non-digital because it just it, it goes the opposite way, even with a with a uh, micron. Uh, but I did find a pen online. Brett Booth uh, had sent something where there is an inking pen. A lot of people are using that goes thin to thick from that direction. Oh. So uh, my plan is to get my hands on those and see how they work. That yeah. Help, help speed me up. Yeah, I don't think I'm I'm that concerned with the line. I, I know from an inker point of view, I mean, they're you know, sticklers for thick to thin. And, um, 
me, I'm just more focused on building up the gray, like the gray value of it. And, yeah. uh, you know, so a little bit of cross and cross hatching uh, when when necessary. Um, but I think I actually pull out and I and I do pull in. So, yeah. And you can do both if you have that Travis uh, Charest kind of line. You know, he doesn't mm -hmm. he doesn't tend to worry about that either. He just fills in the, the shaded areas. I, I need to Im improve, I think, before I can even try that. I, I really use that that line work almost as a crutch kind of. So uh, so for now, it, it works. Um, we'll see. Renda, you're incredibly disciplined. It's very impressive to just hear you even talk about your work. Oh, I'm not an artist. I'm not an, I've heard a lot of artists. Uh, I've worked with a lot of great talent, um, but your focus is tremendous. Yeah. Yeah, that guy Thank needs you. a nipple. That guy needs a nipple though, right? Oh, did I break the nipple rule? Hold yeah. on, where, where do we, have? oh, you're right. Yeah, I'll I compliment can. you and, and right. John will straighten you out. Yeah. <laughs> He's the artist, man. You know, I just, I, you know. Look, nipples sometimes get forgotten. It, it's a, it's a question of how many times you forget the nipple. You know what I mean? Okay. So yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. It's not like you know, if it's just one, and eh, you know, you let it go by. But when you see it happen again and again, then you're like, well, hold up. So yeah, the, play warm campaign. This page was funny because because uh, I drew it, and then Ben gets the pages, and he goes. Well, these guys really should have more tattoos. These are the, this is like the opposing pirate ship here, the, this crew. And uh, this is uh, uh, Taurus is, um, you see that the, the theme here is the the other pirates are Taurus. So you see on their tattoos, I have a lot of bulls, horns, uh, you know, and uh, he's telling me more tattoos. And I think, you know, it's, it's who is doing all the tattoos? Um, Mike Miller. Mike Miller, and <laughs> and I was I was just hating him for that because he set a precedent, and I'm, <laughs> I'm going. But tattoos, you know how long it's going to take to draw all these tattoos? And then if I was I went to town on this guy because he he doesn't have much of an appearance after this. Mm. So when when I put the tattoos on the the captain of the ship, I had to be very careful to know that I can rotate those forms and repeat them, and that they would look cool in every angle, not just wow. because his arm is sticking out. So it was, I was really careful. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. As much as all those details or tattoos and all that are, are great, but you know, keep in mind, Mike Miller is also, he's drawing his own book. I, I'm not sure he would be doing all that for someone else's project. You know what I mean? So, <laughs> yeah. uh, so when you guys go and hire an artist, keep that in mind, uh, that all takes time. And so yeah. the page rate may not be enough to, uh, take care of that. I mean, look at that panel one. I mean, that's a lot of detail. Um, and, and for me, really, that's that's what is important is that, you know, these people are existing in, in a space uh, that looks cool and three dimensional um, tattoos. I get it. But, man, at some point, yeah, you got to draw a line. Mike Miller tattoos are overkill unless it's like mm. your own your own project. Yeah. I My plan is to throw uh, the colorist under the bus and just, and just, <laughs> there you and go. just tell him to suggest them and draw everybody really far away. Yeah. <laughs> let, let a colorist just go in there and color them. And yeah. Yeah. Like put your friends' names in there. <laughs> there you go. Yeah, put yeah. a stop sign in there or something. Just fill in the gaps, colorist, please. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I do that with my art. I throw in a lot of a lot of stuff. I did it in graveyard shift too. Nothing, nothing, uh I didn't put anything bad in there, don't worry. Nice. Yeah. But yeah, you know, some shout outs to my to my sons, my daughter, you know, stuff like that. Nice. So yeah. Um, I'm clicking through these things. Just tell me if you need me to stop or. If yeah, we'll look at a slow. couple. We'll look at a couple more of these, and then we're okay. gonna have to wrap up. Uh, okay. We got this the Jack, is... Jack show is tonight, guys. I think at. Cool. I, I think. I think when I saw the listing, because Anna already put it up, it's gonna be on her channel, and I think she wrote like 10:45, which is an hmm. odd time, but whatever, that probably works. So 10:45 tonight, Eastern Time, Jack show over on that Star Wars Girls channel. Yeah. Don't miss it. Mm -hmm. yeah yeah. That, yeah the colors on there look great good job on that uh uh being able to separate because so generally blues go, recede and warm colors come forward but you know a lot of times people use blue in the foreground to kind of uh uh what are give so dark color. what's that just darkness in the front or... yeah yeah just to kind of shade it all out and uh then you get that nice warm stuff like a big spotlight so it still works yeah good job by the colors yeah, and this actually is the last page I have to show. So, 
Um, yeah, that's it for that. Yeah. So September 25th, everyone keep your, uh, you know, mark on your calendars for uh, this project, Outlaw Knights, Render Contender. And uh, let's see. And then if you haven't, check out uh, Adam's campaign uh, as well for it, College of the Dead. John, can I show my prototypes real quick? Yeah, sure. I'm crazy about my prototypes. Do, do you have a screen share that you're going to use? Or uh, it... No, I'm just going to put uh, it on, okay. on front of my camera. All right. This right. is the cover of the prototype of College of the Dead. Um, really exciting for me. I actually just got this today. That's the cover of two on the back. But uh, the front is the color that Kyle did. And then the interiors, of course, the two panel per page. So these books are completely done. That's the prototype. The um, the the making of the sketchbook, the first version of this is an older prototype, is this book. And it's eight and a half, eleven. 11. It's the 100 pages. As you can see, it's got the layouts and it's got um, full script on the other side. And it's it's 100 pages of that. So if you want to see how we laid it out, that's how the heck we laid it out. And the art book is this eight and a half by eight and a half square book. And it's just each of the panels, one panel per page, eight and a half, eight and a half. Really, really showing off all the work that Javier did to put this together. Um, and uh, this one's 260 pages. So I love these things. So that's that's the prototypes. Yeah, nice. Thanks, man. It looks cool. All right, hold on. Let me uh, get back to our chat, guys. Once again, you, last chance if you have a, uh, a question. Oh, wow. Look at my little logo. It's off to the side. Isn't that weird? Interesting. Let me see if I can uh, switch ah, this stuff a little bit. Even better. Hey, I'm in the middle. There hey, we go. I'm on the left. Okay. All right, we're back. Okay. Um, yeah, so I'm going to go through the chat, see if anybody else had anything to add, and then we'll be wrapping up. Guys, if you haven't, there's 113 watching, 71 likes. Would love it if everyone hit a like on there. Um, it helps this channel get a little bit more visibility and our guest projects by proxy. Also subscribe and ring the bell if you haven't. Uh, we do talk to comic skate creators from time to time. We also have the J Jack show on here uh, every fourth week, every Thursday night. And then, uh, you know, in between time, we do have streams where we just shoot the shit. So. And some great special features that Chappelle show that you did 92,000 views. Oh, yeah, <laughs> dude, I'm gonna talk about that. I think on the Jack show tonight because it's oh, funny. Fantastic! It, it's like, uh, yeah, it's like, yeah, what are I don't know, ninety thousand. But look at like the like and dislike rate. <laughs> <laughs> I, I got okay. so many dislike because a lot of those people they think they're watching are gonna watch a uh, criticism pirated version of his oh character. because of the length oh that's brilliant yeah and it, yeah i mean we only talked about that for a moment but you know it's <laughs> mailing after midnight and then dave Chappelle's stick and stones is the topic just like yeah. i didn't work for dark Quist crystal and that's the topic oh that's um, great. so we just talk about it but because of that people thought i was using clickbait and it's not like not like I wrote that this is Dave Chappelle sticks. No, you did not. You um, did but not. whatever, I don't care. Um, let's see. So uh, Fox B5. John, how do you script a comic? Well, let me toss that word to Adam. Hey, the way you script a comic is, first of all, there's a discipline to it, just like there's a discipline to art. Um, and what I – look uh, – Stefan Petruca, uh, my writer for College of the Dead, also teaches graphic novel writing at a college uh, in Massachusetts. And there are books on how to write comics. James Hudnell, who um, passed away, we lost him um, the, earlier this year. Uh, he wrote a great book on how to write comics. Um, I also like to recommend Professor Geek. His YouTube channel has a lot of really educational uh, videos on how to write comics. I love his work. Um, but... I mean, truthfully, a good way to see it is to, if you can, if you want to getting our ash can, you actually do get to see the full script turn into the pencil layouts. But I would go with James Hudnell's uh, book, but I would also look at Professor Geek, because you're obviously on YouTube now, look at his channel, and especially look at his um, videos and his arch on archetypes, writing for archetypes. You learn so much so fast. I love his channel. Yeah. Um, three acts. Um, or you can, you know, you can use uh, musical. You can go verse, chorus, verse, chorus, bridge, verse, chorus. 
Um, or you can look at it like uh, beginning, middle, end, and in between each beginning, middle, and middle, end, you are you need to put in more beginning, middle, ends. And then you keep going like a fractal right on down. And uh, yeah, so any, any of those little approaches uh, hopefully will help you. But you got to have a good idea. Uh, Matt Wenger, because John is always right. Yeah. Well, it, I'm all, only always right as long as Anna is always right. So when she's right, then I am wrong. Uh, <laughs> easy, equa easy equation. Yeah. Um, let's see. Um, yeah. So I, I don't see much for questions on here. Um, if so, they haven't added me. Um, let me just check. Let me check. Don't ask me how to write. Hey, congrats on your work render. I mean, really, you're, you're working hard. And you're working with good people. And just one, my other one, two thing I want to say to you is um, just to keep track of who you do your best work for. You know, the people like John giving you feedback like that. Um, and as you're learning and stuff, I'm sure you appreciate it. But for anybody else who's listening, who's an artist, money is good and always get paid, be treated fairly with money, but also look at who you're getting to work with, who's giving you this kind of, you know, such valuable feedback um, and opportunity like, uh, like John does, but yeah. you're not a, you're not a kid. So you know that, but I guess I'm just saying you agree with that as a premise, right? Like I, I do actually, I, I was explaining to somebody that the, my art improved without having to do anything at all. I stopped drawing at 16 and didn't pick it up again until two years ago. And it improved just because my work ethic improved and it, it, it turned out, I thought I didn't have any talent, but it was just on the other end of that. So mm -hmm. it was just kind of hidden, I guess, buried under there. You know, I, 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 I really like to hear like just from from I work in teams with a lot of what I do. So I like to hear how organic you can be and how, you know, if you fall somewhere, somebody else is going to catch you. So you're you're not going to ruin the work uh, because you will get that honest feedback from someone that knows what they're talking about. And it sounds like in both of your working relationships that you described tonight anyway, you actually have that. And that that's a great thing to have. Yeah, I got I got lucky, and uh, yeah, but you're earning it too because if you if you didn't deliver, uh, these guys wouldn't know who you were <laughs> very quickly, you know. Because uh, uh, Matt Fowler says, believe it or not, Narwhal's writing vids are pretty good. Yeah, so Narwhal, I, wow. I read some of his actual scripting, and it is it's very kinetic. So if you guys are looking for writing advice, maybe go check out some of the stuff Narwhal has uh, going on there. It's like. John Hughes, but when he writes, you can actually, well, I can at least see what, you know, exactly what he's going for. And, uh, yeah, I think uh, Jar Narwhal is an interesting person. Uh, I know he's, I know he's weird with that mask and, uh, refusing to show his face, but he lives in Portland. So what are you going to do? His art, his art is beautiful. Yeah. So well designed. So like minimalist genius. Great. Yeah. That's what I think. Uh, I think uh, he might be a genius and, uh, but I don't know. I don't know. I'm going to wait until I get my earthbound. earthbound. <laughs> he's multi, multi talented because he's going to be doing colors on a project with uh, me and, and RT bear as well. Oh, uh, coming out soon. So that's chrono mechanics. That's to be teased later, but that's another future project. All right, cool. Yeah. All right, guys. Then, uh, Everyone be sure to go check out these projects. Outlaw Night uh, is launching September 25th. Uh, Adam has uh, College of the Dead. That's available right now on Indiegogo. Absolutely. And, uh, yeah, so the books are, looks like he's getting ready to print or ship. When was your shipping day, Adam? College of the Dead. Um, we're going to deliver to everyone before Halloween of uh, October, so before October 31st. So we're looking to ship. At this point, it looks like the first week in October. Nice. So – uh, Adam's ready to go with this project, guys. So if you want to get a, a, Psyched. a gift uh, right around Halloween, there you go. That'd be perfect for it. Absolutely. And uh, so, yeah. So thank you, everyone in the chat for showing up. Thank you to the uh, Super Chatters. Appreciate you. And uh, thanks to the, my guests, uh, Render Contender and Adam Post. Great to have you guys on here. Thank you and, so much. Uh, thanks, John. Yeah. So, um, again, tonight, uh, well, first, if you guys haven't, go back Graveyard Shift. There's about 10 days left on it, and then it's done. There's no in demand coming. Hear me now. Believe me later. It will not be in demand. <laughs> you uh, listen will, to me you later. Will yeah. it. You will regret it. <laughs> yeah. And uh, so if you guys haven't, go check that out. We got some art in there by Render Contender, uh, Todd Marooney, Mike McMahon, myself, uh, 
uh, stories written by Mark Poulton, uh, Cal Jamison, and Von Klaus. So uh, really good team here, really good stuff. Uh, so get in there and back it while the backing's good. Um, otherwise, you'll have to wait for volume three to come out, which will probably have some kind of, you know, reprints or something along the lines to keep you caught up. Um, but that's not going to be till probably well into 2020. So thank you guys very much for being here. Uh, Donut Earth is real. Uh, have a good night and see you guys on Jack Show over on the Anna's channel. So thanks. All right. See you bye. later. Bye. Thanks.